Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Bells. We are doing another episode of my Tarot TBR series. I'm super excited. These are the books I'm going to be reading in February. You will see that my cards kind of attacked me just a bit this month. It's very funny, I'm sure. But I'm just gonna jump right into it because I'm very excited as always to talk about all of this. I do have a question for you before we get started. Um, I know that you guys have been really enjoying the Tarot TBR and I've gotten a lot of comments about how everyone really likes the fairy tale history, like going into the stories and the folklore behind the cards. I'm curious if you guys would be interested in a series that is dedicated to like the actual fairy tale history, kind of going behind the scenes to some of these older stories that we're used to or these older tropes that we see in fiction. If that's something that would interest you, please um, tell me in the comments below or you can DM me on Instagram. I'm very interested in making it, but I don't wanna do it if no one's gonna watch it, you know what I mean? Let me know how you feel. Uh, if you do enjoy this content, don't forget to like, maybe subscribe and let's bring on the books. As always, I am using my Tarot of the Divine tarot card deck by Yoshi Yoshitani. It's a tarot deck that is inspired by deities, folklore, and fairy tales from around the world, which I think is so appropriate for a booktube channel. It's absolutely gorgeous. The link is in my description if you want to look into buying it for yourself. I have a link to the Google Doc in the description as well if you guys wanna check out the rules for this game. Let's just get started. So the first card that I pulled this month was the Three of Swords, and the story that's on here is the Crane Wife. So I actually pulled this card in my last video. This is a Japanese fairy tale, and the short version is a wounded crane shows up on this man's doorstep, and he heals it, it flies away, and the next day a woman appears. They instantly fall in love, get married, and because they need money, the woman offers to sew beautiful clothes that he can sell at the market, but only if he never watches her making them. So they do this, they make a lot of money, um, and he winds up getting really greedy and asking her to make more and more clothes. She does that, but her health like steadily declines. And one day he is so curious as to what's going on behind closed doors that he snoops to see how she makes these clothes and finds the crane that he healed at the beginning of the story, like literally plucking feathers from its back to then weave through the loom. And then the crane who sees him flies away, doesn't come back. This card in particular, the Three of Swords, if it shows up in a spread, it's basically suggesting that you need to feel the painful emotions that you haven't been letting yourself feel. You need to express your sadness or your anger or your pain. Um, these feelings are like a necessary part of life. This time will pass. For my number three card, the prompt that I look for is a nonfiction and I'm looking for something about emotional expression or um, possibly self-harm or grief, something along those lines. This is my first attacky card from this spread. And so last month I picked a bright red scream for this, which is a book about the psychology behind self-injury. I got a chapter in, as you can see, and never picked it up again. Um, and so this card was the first card I picked up and was like, hey, hey, no, no, you need to finish that book. So <laughs> I know it's kind of lame to start off with, but it turns out I need to uh, read this book this month. So that was our first lovely card. The next card I picked up is also one that we've seen before, and that is the Queen of Wands. The deity that's on here is Pele, who is the Hawaiian volcano goddess. My first tarot TBR, I go into the story, her specific like origin story almost in that video, if you wanna go see a longer version. One version of that legend is that she came to Hawaii after being exiled from Tahiti for her very fiery temper, which is appropriate because she's the goddess of fire and volcanoes and wound up fighting to the death with her older sister, Namakaukahai, who's the water goddess because Pele seduced her husband. 
Oops, I wanted to talk more about the actual experiences of people meeting Pele in Hawaii. The idea is that Pele like travels throughout the islands um, and appears to people as either like a beautiful young woman or sometimes an old woman dressed all in white, sometimes with a white dog. And drivers have been known to like pick up old women dressed like that and look in the rear view mirror to find their back seat empty, which just makes me think of that like very first Supernatural episode <laughs> with the woman in white. It feels kind of similar to like the La Llorona myth, I guess, or People say that uh, Pele's face has like mysteriously appeared in photos of the volcanoes around Hawaii. She is very revered and respected. And if you wanna learn more information, I put the link where I found all of that um, below. The actual card, the Queen of Wands, generally represents like a very fiery force, obviously. And it reminds you to see through your creative visions and life purpose, really like focus on what you want to accomplish, even though there's roadblocks. So it's essentially like own your power, shine your light, meet new people, like, do what makes you feel passionate. My prompt for this card is a female author. And for this, I was looking for something about finding your independence or focusing on a goal or a life purpose or a life passion and some kind of competition because of the competing sisters. I settled on a book that actually showed up in my Christmas tag video, which was The Ballerinas by Rachel Kalpek Dale. It's about a former ballerina who returns to her studio to basically choreograph the next like big piece. She's coming back to like make things right with her former dancer friends, deal with the politics, deal with the competition. I felt like that was just like a perfect place to start for this card and I'm very excited to read this this month. So that's this one. The next card that I picked up we have not seen before and that is the King of Coins and represented on here is Hanuna the World Turtle from the Iroquois creation story. This is a long, long story. I definitely think it's worth reading. So I put the link to the story that I found um, below. He's the turtle who is willing to like bear the weight of the earth on its back. When he moves, the seas rise, like tsunamis happen. When he's restless or violent, there are earthquakes. So all of that is suggested to come from this turtle. There are different versions of the story and there are actually world turtles stories from a bunch of different cultures, which I thought was really interesting. But one of the Iroquois stories is that the animals like under the command of the great sky woman gathered dirt and materials from the bottom of the ocean and like stacked them onto the great turtle's shell. As that pile like grew bigger and bigger, the turtle also grew with it until the earth or also known as like Turtle Island was born. The actual card of the King of Coins represents like stability and faithfulness and kind of represents like material wealth and abundance. So if it shows up in a spread, it's often indicating like the fulfillment of some kind of creative task or business venture or investment and suggesting that like this goal is going to be attained, you're going to be successful. Whatever you have been trying to get towards, you're gonna get, which is awesome. I love that. The prompt that I have for King cards is a male author. But for this case, I was looking for something like about a father, something that like feels protective or about again, kind of like achieving a goal. So I actually picked The Road by Cormac McCarthy, which is a post-apocalyptic novel, basically about the story of a father and his son traveling across this like barren apocalyptic landscape. Um, I know it's supposed to be absolutely devastating. There's also a movie with Viggo Mortensen, if I'm not mistaken, who I love. But I thought that the, the concept of a father taking care of his son and then like trying to reach the end of this path that they are on felt very appropriate for this card. So that's the one I picked. I think it's gonna be really sad, <laughs> but I am I am excited. So that was my King of Coins poll. The next one is also a new card that we haven't seen. And I pulled the Magician, which is a major arcana card. And this is represented by the fairy godmother. I wanted to talk about like fairy godmothers in general and kind of like where that came from, because obviously they're more of a trope in a lot of fairy tales rather than having like one particular story. I mean, Cinderella's fairy godmother is probably the most famous, but the trope gained a lot of traction through French tales where the godmothers don't just provide guidance, but like show up at births and give prophecies, which kind of made me think of like the Sleeping Beauty fairies. Like those three fairies are probably an extension of that trope, especially like with Maleficent showing up and giving the prophecy that Sleeping Beauty is going to 
die on her 21st birthday or whatever. We also know that in older medieval romances, fairy or fae preside over births and give gifts. Um, so generally fairy godmothers are fairies who are actually the child's godmother. And the trope generally shows these godmothers as very wise, benevolent women. Some think that the trope descended from the the fates of mythology, like the three fates, like thinking Greek mythology. Um, and others believe it's like a Christian Catholic idea because in medieval times, godparents would actually take control over their godchild's religious education. So think like the godmother, right? The actual card, the magician, when it shows up in a spread, basically it's saying that like, it's gonna bring all the tools that you need for something to come true. It's about manifestation, moving forward with your creative ventures, creating goals, taking action. It's all good things. The magician is basically like, here's your helping hand pushing you towards doing this thing. So for this card, my prompt is a fantasy with an important female guiding character or side character. After some, a lot of research, <laughs> cause I have a lot of fantasies on my TBR, I settled on Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This is a YA novel. I don't read a lot of YA novels, but this one got, <laughs> just rave reviews. I'm very like attracted towards the concept. It's essentially about this magical girl who has a reaper mother who summons souls. But when magic, the like night magic disappears, all of the mad, magi, magi? Magical people were killed, so this girl was left alone. The story is about her trying to bring back magic to the people. It's about this girl versus the like evil crown prince who took away magic. She gets help from a rogue princess. I thought that was appropriate for our fairy godmother card. I think it'll be really fun. It's written by a woman of color, <laughs> which if you just watched my reading stats, reading goals video, I'm really trying to like read more books by people of color. So this was a great place to start, I think. I'm just excited. I think it sounds like fun. I love a good fantasy. I love a West African focused fantasy. I think that's really cool. The last book I read kind of like that was Black Sun, which was a South American inspired fantasy. So I, I would be very excited to see the West African version of this. That is what I picked for my magician card. And then the final poll, because surprisingly enough, so the first month where I'm only reading the five books that I originally planned on. And the card that I pulled was the 10 of swords. So this card is pretty gruesome <laughs> and representing Sedna, who is the Inuit goddess of the sea. And the legend is like one of the most well-known and widespread of Inuit myths. One version is that during a blizzard, a young man shows up at a family's igloo, basically asking for shelter. He's welcomed in and winds up having sex with the daughter. In the morning, the young man is gone and there are animal tracks outside. And so basically they discover that the family's lead dog had disguised himself as a man. And so when his daughter becomes pregnant, the father basically rows her to an island and just like abandons her there. And so the dog provides for her, bringing her food and water and helping her build shelter. And she eventually gives birth to six children, three Inuit children and three that are sort of dog-like with larger ears and like snouts as noses. She sends the three dog children out on the water to kind of make their own way. And the father returns to take his daughter off the island, but on their way home, a storm threatens to capsize the boat. So <laughs> the father and all the boatmen decide to throw the daughter into the sea. And so when she tries to climb back in, her father chops off her fingers, which is what is represented here, really lovely. And her fingers end up becoming seals. So she tries to climb back up on the boat and he cuts off her hands, which become walruses. And she tries a final time and he cuts off her forearms, which become whales. And she sinks to the depths of the sea and becomes Sedna, the woman who controls all sea beasts and is half woman and half fish. So the 10 of swords as a card, obviously is not the best thing to see in a spread. It basically represents like backstabbing or a betrayal and marks some kind of an ending, like an, a painful but inevitable ending of a relationship or like a significant change in a relationship. And it's about like letting go and accepting those circumstances. And basically like whatever that betrayal is, it's the last time you're going to be hurt by that person. And it's time for you to like forgive them and like move past it. The prompt that I have for the number 10 cards are standalone books. And for this one, I was looking for something about a betrayal. I actually picked two books, but I picked White Ivy by Susie Yang, which I also talk about in my books I'm 
really, really want to read in 2022. And it's basically about a young immigrant girl who is a thief who steals to send money to her family and winds up being sent away for having a romantic affair with the affluent boy next door. And they meet again like a decade later when she's turned into a very ruthless young woman who's just trying to do what she can to survive. And basically uses him to survive um, and sinks her claws into the family. And so I thought it would be really interesting for this card to pick something where the betrayal feels almost necessary. And it's from the person that we're reading. So it's not like the protagonist was betrayed, but is the betrayer. And I'm, I'm very excited to read it. Like I said earlier, I'm actively working on reading more books by people of color, especially about like the immigrant experience in particular. The second one, which I also got because I'm mostly just excited to read this book and I thought it kind of suited this card was Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. This is like a really short horror about a woman who lives in a Stepford YV cult kind of situation and basically discovers like starts to unravel all the empty promises that this cult gave to her and I've heard that it ends really weird um, and uncomfortably, and I'm quite excited. You guys know I love my creepy books. I love stuff about cults. So I'm, I'm very curious to see where this one goes. And so those were my picks for the 10 of swords cards. I had to pick six books still, even if the cards didn't want me to. But those are all the books that I'm planning on reading in February. I'm curious if you guys think I should give myself like a punishment for not finishing a book in the previous month because like I didn't finish Bright Red Scream. I kind of am just doing this as a way to kind of actually read through my TBR and not just read books that sound interesting in the moment and then just continually add to my TBR until time immemorial. But I'm curious if like you guys have ideas for something like that. I don't know what I would do for it. So if that's something that you think I should do for this TBR game, I guess let me know. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Uh, it's always a pleasure. I love doing this research and doing these videos and it's super cool that you guys also love watching them. So I love everything about that. Again, let me know what you think about doing like a dedicated series strictly for just like the fairy tale aspect of it. I think that could be really cool. As always, if you found value in this content, please give it a little thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you're feeling subscribey today and go and check out this video if you haven't already. I will see you all next time. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Thank you.